Islanders, welcome back. Well, today I want to follow up on a topic that I've been covering um, pretty intensely, which is the Kylie, Jordan, Tristan, Chloe, it's hard to keep them all straight, right? Sort of like love saga, the love rhombus. It's not a triangle, it's a square that's leaning over because it's about to collapse. Rhombus. Geometry! So, yeah. In that video, I talked a lot about, you know, the dynamics of female friendship, cheating, but I got a lot of feedback from you guys that you wanted a dedicated video on cheaters. So today I want to talk about number one, first and foremost, why men cheat and women, because it, I'll differentiate between the two because there is a difference. And most importantly, how to move on if you've been cheated on and you want to try to make this relationship work right? So first of all, just want to let you guys know that if you have a love question, find me on the Instant Go app and click chat to get connected with me. Don't try to schedule an appointment. It's a functionality that actually doesn't work. Don't even get me started, but click chat and we can be connected instantly and we can talk privately about boys and cheaters and love and sex and whatever you want. And also be sure and follow me on social media. My username is ShallonXO on Insta, Twitter, and Snapchat. And click like and subscribe for new videos every Friday and like a lot in between because i got time on my hands lately. Let's talk about stuff. So yeah, cheating. I have kind of an unusual purview on cheating. First and foremost, I will come clean. I've cheated on a lot of people, like a lot. Didn't cheat on my husband, not cheat on my boyfriend now. But I mean, I think that's because I've grown up enough to realize like what my strengths and weaknesses are. And when we think about cheating, I remember that when I was, I used to be married, I'm no longer married. I remember like having these conversations about, you know, what makes a marriage and what makes fidelity. And I realized that like, I at the time, and still, I would have given my husband a kidney. I still would. I would have been on welfare and moved to a podunk town in service of his dreams. I would have moved his family in with us if they needed to. And you can make very, very good arguments against doing any of those things. You know, they're risky. There's a lot of downsides. But when it comes to fidelity in a marriage, the only thing that matters is sexual fidelity, right? I, like all of those things I was willing to do, but it's like, had I cheated? It's like, fuck, it's over. You're a fucking bitch. Like, and most people would have had that view of me. Society as, as a whole has that view of cheating because it all comes down to your sexual fidelity, which is ironic because when you think about it, hooking up with other people is very much what most people want to do. A lot of people would probably not want to give someone a kidney. They don't want to live with their in-laws. They don't want to live in a backwater town, but pretty much everyone can identify with a vibe of being like, oh man, I got a crush on someone. And yet we're not allowed to explore that. It's interesting. And I just want to say up front, this is not a Tristan apologist video, okay? He's a fucking garbage person. But he's not a garbage person because he has like sexual needs and he wants to hook up with other people. He's a garbage person because he lies about it. Whoever you are and whatever you're into, there's a tribe for you. There's a woman for you. There is someone out there on planet Earth, 8 billion people, who is going to be into it too. But you can't find them unless you're honest about what you want. No one can change what they don't acknowledge. And the fact that he has gotten into two serious relationships, remember Jordy Craig, who he left when she was pregnant? Hmm, that's interesting. And then Chloe, who he cheated on like while she was going into labor, he never really stopped cheating on her. He was never faithful to her. He was probably never faithful to Jordy. He's probably never been faithful at all. And again, if that's the way he chooses to live his life, fine. I don't think he should be bringing kids into this scenario, but moreover, he needs to have been 100 with these women. I love you. You're going to be my number one. I will come home to you. I will marry you if you want, but I am going to sleep with other people. The hardest thing about cheating was actually my ex-husband who said this to me, and it's such a good philosophy. It's that when you're being cheated on, the root, it's not... It's painful, of course, it's an emotional betrayal, but the root of that betrayal is in essence, I have been making decisions basing, based on a reality that doesn't exist. That's where the foolishness comes in, you know? Because when you get cheated on, the first thing you feel is stupid. And that that's what's under that. It's like, huh, I've been planning for a future that actually was a fiction. It was a fantasy. I've been faithful to someone who wasn't giving that back to me. And that's why you feel dumb and that's why you feel enraged. So when you look at it like that, it's like, yeah, if he could have, if Tristan could have been transparent and been like, I am going to be sleeping with other people. Let's make some, let's make some rules around this. 
Would you prefer it's only escorts and they're in and out? Would you prefer I had a second girlfriend? Most of them are going to say no. <laughs> you know, would you prefer it's only when I'm traveling with the team and I never exchange phone numbers? Like you can set parameters and maybe Chloe's parameters would have been like none of this. Fucking none of this. I don't want you even looking at another girl. That is, that is acceptable. I can understand why she would feel that way. No one's going to fault her for feeling that way. But you can fault her for staying in a relationship once she did hear the truth and she heard it. Cheaters probably aren't going to come to you and say that. Hey, guess what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat. Hope you're cool with it. But they're going to make that truth known through their actions, through the cheating. And this is what we have to realize with cheaters. They're probably not going to change. I'm not going to change. My needs are what they are. And at this point in my life, I'm done apologizing for them. I'm done feeling guilty. So what I do instead is I'm honest. I use that the anxiety I would have reserved for the guilt of cheating. And I put that anxiety into forward motion. And I have the hard conversations. Because if you have a wandering eye, there's going to be a hard conversation. You can do it the easy way or the tougher way. You can have that hard conversation up front and you're like, look, this is what I'm capable of. And I want to foster an environment. Like for me, what works well in my relationship now is like my boyfriend and I, we talk a lot about our feelings. And sometimes just like talking about having urges and like, oh my God, there was this guy and I have a crush on him, blah, blah, blah. Like I would have made out with him or something like that, like at a concert. Just even being able to give a name to it and express it demystifies it. It's like, oh. Okay. It's like when you're having a craving for something, like a craving for, you know, candy or something. If you can just be like, I have a really bad craving right now. Someone can help you kind of diagnose that. It's like, all right, like, let's talk it out. What's under there? Is it boredom? Is it frustration? Is it sadness? What are you trying to cover up? Hmm. Suddenly you don't need the cookie so bad. Same with cheating sometimes. Sometimes you really do just need to make out with that other dude, but that's a whole separate story. But Tristan isn't doing that. He's not doing that icky talk in the positive way he should. He's waiting until his ass gets caught and Chloe's like, don't do this again. And at this point, Chloe becomes her own like co-conspirator, really. Like she is just as much the architect of her misfortune as Tristan is. Because when a man shows you who he is, when he shows you the truth, because he's not going to say it, he's going to show it, you have to believe him. You got to read that writing that's on the wall. I get so many questions from you guys that it's like, a guy isn't lying to you, you are lying to you. He is making his truth abundantly clear through his actions, through what he's saying. He doesn't want a relationship. He just wants to be fuck buddies. And you're, it's like, try, oh, but let me look at this. You're twisting facts to suit theories when really we need to be twisting theories to suit facts. You see the difference? It's an old Sherlock Holmes thing. So why do people cheat? There's a variety of reasons. And I believe that men and women cheat for different reasons. I mean, we, all of these reasons can fall under both sexes, but I think some skew to one gender or the other. So women, a lot of times cheat for attention and revenge. You know, they cheat to get their partner's attention. Maybe they have a partner who's been taking them for granted, ignoring them having an affair of their own. And they're, it's like, you know, their mind is elsewhere. And obviously a component of that is also revenge. It's like, well, fuck it. He wants to stay late at the office. Fine. I'm going to go live my life. I'm tired of sitting here like a cocker spaniel waiting for him to pay attention to me. I'm going to go seek my own happiness. And in a way, I almost think that kind of motivation is healthier if you want to move on and save your relationship because it's easier to diagnose and it's easier to fix because it has to do with the relationship dynamics. So if you fix that dynamic in the relationship, you can eliminate the need for that cheating behavior, right? However, the third kind of cheating is arguably the worst. It's, I just like strange. Strange is a term that a guy taught me. It means just like strange pussy, just like different, a different person. No matter how much you like your favorite food, do you want to eat it three meals a day? Probably not. You just want something different. Even though you're going to go through that drive through McDonald's and you're, you're like, this is going to make me sick. This is disgusting food. But sometimes you just want it. And afterwards you feel guilty and you're like, this is gross. I don't want to eat this again for six months. But you kind of needed that reset. Unfortunately, that is what a lot of cheating comes down to. And it's important to understand that, again, walk in the light of the truth, because then it becomes not personal. 
You are the creme brulee. Sometimes someone just wants a McFlurry. They're okay with the garbagey McFlurry and maybe they're gonna appreciate the creme brulee more. Of course, if you're the creme brulee getting McFlurried, this isn't really very comforting because you're not out there trying a McFlurry. No, you're just eating his creme brulee, right? So I'm not saying any of this to like excuse it as a behavior or certainly to make you feel like you shouldn't be upset when someone cheats on you. Absolutely. It's one of the most devastating things that can happen. It's, it's awful. And there's a reason it ruins marriages because it's hard to come back from, especially when in the back of your mind, you don't really have a reassurance that it's not going to happen again. And I can tell you, it probably will. And you're probably not going to get that kind of transparency from your partner. So here's a way that you can move on from it. Sit them down and be like, I need to get to the root of why this happened. Because I can't move on if I don't understand what brought us here. Because then I won't have any reassurance that we're not going to be right back here in six months or six years or whatever. And I can't go through this again. You don't want to go through this again. We don't want to put our kids through this again or whatever. The dog even has suffered enough. And let me tell you, he's probably not going to be like, oh, well, here's my very woke analysis of my behavior. Probably not. People aren't very insightful and introspective. It's painful and it's ugly. And it's contrary to what society wants them to be. Nobody wants to shine a light on a part of yourself that society says is not okay. Like I was saying about, you know, marriage, like I give someone a kidney, but I can't make out with somebody else on a dance floor. Okay. Here are my larger thoughts on marriage. This is a quick tangent and it'll tie in, I promise. 60% of marriages in America fail. Some people say that's a, a larger estimate, even if it's 50, even if it's 50, let's say it's 50%. 50% of marriages fail. And these are just the people who are actually doing something about their failed marriage. They're not, there's no percentage calculated for people who are just like gutting it out in a marriage they're deeply unhappy in. Or like a boyfriend situation, you know, just a relationship, not even a marriage. If 50% of planes crashed, you'd stop getting on planes, wouldn't you? We all would. And we would start having conversations about how to build a better plane. No one's doing that with marriage. Instead, they are marching you onto that goddamn airplane. And if it crashes, it's actually your fault is the passenger. It's not the plane's fault. Let's shh, don't talk about the plane. Don't talk about the plane. Keep getting on the plane. It's going to keep crashing. It's your fault. Go, go kill yourself. How is that functioning? Society works best when our laws and our mores are shaped around human behavior. Look at the criminal justice system. Things that are frequent are deemed less bad, like jaywalking, you know? A lot of people jaywalk, so you don't get 35 to life for jaywalking. Things that are more rare are worse. Murder, bank robbery, Ponzi schemes. Not a lot of people are out there doing that. So that gets a higher sentence. And yet when it comes to marriage, it's, it's completely the opposite. A lot of people are cheating. A lot of people want to be cheating. And yet we vilify that as the worst possible thing you can do. How do I know a lot of people are cheating? Well, <laughs> actually have statistics. Do you remember when Ashley Madison, that website, that dating website about like, it's meant for people to have an affair. It's for married people looking to cheat. Remember when it was hacked a few years ago? Do you know how many users that site had? These are actual users, not bots. 32 million users. That is larger than the population of California. That is not a statistical outlier. That is an enormous chunk of the population. And those are just people on that site that are cheating. There's no metric for who is cheating at the bars, at the office, out on road trips, away games with the Cavaliers. There's no, there's no data on that. But if you just look at that, it's like, there's a lot of people out there for whom the construct of marriage isn't working. And what was our first instinct? Our, our continuing instinct, fuck those people, those garbage people. Blah. Again, get on that plane. It's probably going to crash. I don't care. We're not rebuilding it. So again, none of this is meant to be a cheating apologist, but I do think it's time. We owe it to ourselves to start looking at the rules of monogamy and saying, does this work? Does this work in society? Fuck society, actually. Does this work for me? Does this work in my life? You know, there's a saying that people are only as faithful as their options. And I think it's so funny because I, I, I think it's so true. It's like, if you look at who cheats, it's like, of course, all the Kardashian men cheat. Look at all of their options. They're rappers on tour. They're basketball players playing games in every major city with girls like, ha. Ah, they're hot. 
Do you know how good an athlete is in bed? <sighs> good. I've dated a lot of hockey players. I've dated a lot of athletes. And I mean, it's kind of worth wrecking a home. <laughs> They're really good. They'll wreck you in a different way. Like you can't blame girls for being after these dudes. And you can't blame guys necessarily for being like, oh man, you know, there's a lot of McFlurries here. Just a lot. I want to just blend them all up. And so I want us to start this dialogue about monogamy, what works. If you want to talk to your partner about it, reference this video. Be like, yo, I watched this like gorgeous blonde girl on YouTube the other day. And she was talking about some really radical ideas with monogamy. What do you think about it? You know, it's easy to bring up hard topics in the context of a story about something else that someone else is a subject of, right? So use this to your advantage. Make me your, your like monogamy more a guinea pig. I can take it. So back to moving on and back to Tristan, back to just dudes. You're sitting your partner down. You're like, I need to know why this happened. Tell him, let's take a few days. We both need to take a few days to examine our role in this. Because if you think it's more than just the strange, more than just the McFlurrying, if you think he's doing this out of revenge, he has a whole like emotional affair that he's been carrying on, maybe with this chick at work. Ask yourself like, what in our relationship might have contributed to this outcome? I'm not saying this is your fault. It's not. People are adults. And if he has this need, he should have come to you and communicated it like an adult. He doesn't just go up, get to put his dick in whatever flurry he wants to. Okay. But again, if your ultimate goal is moving on, we have to examine our role in everything, right? We have to examine our role in the emotional payout we get from things, but I'll bring that up later. However, I understand if your goal isn't to move on. A lot of times we don't want peace. We want victory. And the path to those two things looks very, very different. Victory, if, you, if you're man cheated and you want victory, you're not going to want to figure out why this happened and why it's not going to happen again. You are going to be standing on the hill of martyrdom, basking in how right you are. And it feels good. It feels good to be the victim, doesn't it? Because everyone has pity for you. Everyone's like rallying red. There's a lot of emotional payout that's positive that people get when they're cheated on, you know? It's like, oh. It also gives you a carte blanche to do whatever the fuck you want, right? Look at Kourtney Kardashian. Like I said in another video, why she stayed with Scott Disick. She had a license to kill, basically. She could do whatever she wants because whatever she did was never, it's always gonna pale in comparison to whatever Scott was doing. So that dynamic worked for her. So if you find yourself in this situation where your man has cheated many times, maybe ask yourself what, if I'm being honest, what emotional payout am I getting? Am I getting from this victimhood? Just, you know, drama. Am I just bored? And I kind of like, like this, is this dynamic, but has this been modeled throughout my life? Did my parents go through this cycle? This on, off, on, off. You guys have asked me to do a video on Cardi B and offset. And like, I think, I think it's, their issue of the breaking up, the cheating, all this, it is a, an issue of modeling. I think that they saw this in their neighborhoods with their siblings' relationships, with their parents' relationships. This is just kind of like normal to them. It, toxic does not mean not normal. Something can be toxic and very normal and very familiar to you. doesn't mean it's healthy. What's right isn't always popular. What's popular isn't always right, you know? So after you've taken some time with your man, he's off in his cave, you're off in your own, and really, really just let it burn. Really just let it burn. See what he says. See if you guys can come up with some sort of like clarity about this. And again, tell him like, I can't move on if I don't know how we got here. Then ask yourself, do I want peace or do I want victory? If you want peace, if you truly want to move on, come up with a set of parameters. Pick three things that you need him to do differently. And put some sort of, maybe not communicate this to him, but in your mind, put some sort of timeline on this. Like say he cheated at work happy hour at this bar he always goes to. You need him to come home after work. No more work happy hours. Say he is like in someone's DMs and that's inappropriate. Maybe you need to delete your Instagram for a few months. Whatever you think is going to make you feel better, communicate that, but make sure it's reasonable. That's why I said pick three things. Because when we're angry and when someone's willing to do whatever we want, we get drunk with power. And this, and you're going to do this. You're going to rotate my tires. It's like, all right, that's not sustainable. And again, peace or victory. Because if you want victory, if you just want to like crack the whip and like, oh, draw the blood, you're, yeah, that's probably what you're going to do. But we're going to get back to that in a minute. For now, we're going to assume that you want to heal this relationship and move on. So give him these things and 
he might say no to this. That's a data point you need to consider. Like Chloe, when she didn't read the writing on the wall with Tristan that he's probably going to keep cheating, you need to read the writing on the wall. If he's not willing to make these concessions, all right, like that's his truth. He's living it. But is that something you want to be a part of? Also, though, ask yourself, when you put these parameters on him, because I believe people who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. But I also believe that people deserve a modicum of privacy and respect. I don't want to be an emotional parole officer in a relationship. I want to be a girlfriend. I want to be the girl. I want to be loved. I want to be courted. I want to be his queen. I don't want to be his jailer. And when I'm like, you better let me see your phone. And where are you? And I'm going to text you. It's like, I don't have the energy for that. And how dare a man think that I'm going to use my precious, my precious, irrenewable, non-renewable energy to divert away from my goals and my dream, my career, my next book, my YouTube channel, my friends, my family, my body, my hair, my mud masks to keep his ass out of trouble. I don't fucking think so. I don't need to do that. You know why? There's 8 million people in this city alone where I live. I don't make deals. Why would I? You act up, you're out. If you act up, you haven't communicated what your truth is. I'm blindsided by this. There's another penis around the corner, just like a subway. It's the same New Yorkers have. It's little known, but it's true. But say you do want to move on. Okay. You set the parameters. They're reasonable. He agrees. You feel good about this. You've gotten to the root of why it happened. You feel good. It's not going to happen again. Now comes the hardest part. Do you know what the hardest part of getting over cheating is? Actually just moving forward. Because you're probably going to want to stay in that victory, that martyrdom lane where you're right and you get to make every decision. He, he can't say shit about shit. It's nice. You're a tyrant in your own little country. You're a lone little despot. You're a little fat Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Tackling. It's fun. It's nice. It's great. And my dress is like in my arms. But peace or victory. If you want to move on, you got to do it. At some point, you got to stop beating him up and you got to move forward. Because it's not fair to keep everyone in that purgatory. It's not forward moving. Relationships never stagnate. They're either moving backwards or they're moving forwards. And that is under your control at this point. You know, you don't get to have the control of like making him check in every 10 minutes. Ha ha ha. And then be like, well, I don't know why our relationship failed. You have a hand in this now. With great power comes great responsibility. So when you move forward, that means you're not bringing it up every week. Every time he fails to unload the dishwasher when the dishes are clean, you're not like, do you remember when you cheated? Like you can't be pork barreling it and tacking it on to every single argument you have for the rest of your life. If something comes up that is relevant to the cheating, yes, you bring that up. But moving on, it's hard. You have to pick up your feet and keep fucking moving away. And maybe you can't. Maybe you want to and you're like, I am mature enough. We're going to get through this. This is fine, blah, blah, blah. And then you get in it and you're like, I cannot get over this. Then you do need to move on. You need to cut it off and you need to go. Because you, <laughs> I say my energy source is non-renewable. Time is a resource you cannot renew. Why do you want to, don't waste your time in a situation that isn't serving either one of you. He doesn't want to be in a relationship where he feels like the villain. You don't want to play parole officer or martyr or whatever, or maybe you do. Which brings me back to the other way this could go. You don't want peace. You maybe just want victory. If that's the case, if you're just like, uh -huh, just like bukkake with all this like martyrdom. You know, I think that's why Chloe stays in that relationship. Like she gets an emotional payout from being with men who chronically cheat on her because every single man she's gone for has cheated on her. She only dates like LA Lakers, like, you know, like only professional basketball players. Like girl, try like a hedge funder, you know, like try a different kind of cheater. Maybe, I don't know, go for a nice powder blue button up. But like, she's getting something out of that. So you need to take a good hard look. Like, is that kind of true for you? Again. I'm not saying this to indict you, to shame you, to like, mm. I'm saying this because there is only a certain amount of years we have. Who knows how many? We don't know. We don't even know. So why are we going to waste time being in a situation that is so unhealthy 
And please, God, tell me that there aren't kids involved in this. You know, again, not even the dog, not even waffles. Hasn't she suffered enough? So look at what's ultimately going to be the healthiest for you. Chances are it's not staying in a relationship with a dude who's cheating. Because if that's not how you are, if that's not like sexual McFlurries aren't the thing you need, that's fine. You're going to find a person out there like, I'm not saying everyone cheats, not by a long shot, not by a long shot, but you're never going to find that person if you're stuck with the wrong person. We can't look ahead and behind at the same time. We only have a certain amount of energy and a certain amount of days in our lives to fulfill, fulfill them wisely. I can only hope Chloe finds this. I hope Tristan is gone for good. He probably isn't, you know? The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And Chloe's past says she forgives and she learns and moves on and then goes for exactly the same dynamic because that's where she's comfortable. You guys can check out my video on that, on narratives and victim mentalities. I think it would be really illuminating. And if you guys have more questions on this topic, I would love to hear about it. I want to talk about everything all the time. I have no life of my own. Find me on the Instant Go app. It uh, excuse me, at Shallon XO and click chat. And like I said, follow me on social, Insta, Twitter, and Snap at Shallon XO and click like and subscribe for new videos every Friday.